Thursday, November 1st, originally scheduled select board meeting to order. Uh, to my left is uh, Pete Kelly. Wayne Lamberton is not here tonight. To my right is Angelina Capron. And uh, uh, Jeremy hasn't showed up yet. But, uh, and then we uh, also with us is Dana Hadley, our town administrator, Diane Isabel, our treasurer, and our police chief, Bill Wolf. Um, we will start with the public hearing for an ordinance to allow snowmobile ATV travel on town roads. <laughs> we seem to be lacking some participants. And as, as I told you, we received a few uh, routes that Jim sent me, and we also received a copy of the letter that Governor Scott wrote to Bast. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if it's the change. In days. Yeah, it's, it's those two. Yeah, there's, there's one for summer access and one for winter. Was the was the Vasa and Bast were they going to take and join together on this or are they going to take and go at it one at a time? Well, the, the original concept was, as it's no surprise to everyone, things are getting more expensive every day. Yeah. That if for the groups to work together since they have similar interest and in a similar area about there needs to be a bridge built that they can share the cost of that and you know the maintenance and stuff that has to be done along the trail so there and it's a pilot project for us we we share trails in other places but we've never started from scratch working together trying to do that so it's trying to see what we can do with that concept you know can we really afford to go in and make a new trail and when blazes new thing is with today's economy and everything that, that's happening yeah so that they're so far so good you know the local clubs have all it used to be snow machines and atvs that was a four letter words back and forth and they never got along the times have changed a lot of people are, there's a lot of crossover now a lot of people on both machines like myself so it's a much more of a collaborative <coughs> efforts out there and the more folks work together you find that if there's a trail somewhere it tends to get used in the summer yeah. Anyway, that people have find a way to get them out there, and if you've got actual clubs involved that they can help keep all these things and keep it clean up and keep trees falling and all that sort of stuff, the sort of stuff that happens normally in the woods that you have to upkeep the trail. And Brad, I've also invited the chief to speak to it and the highway superintendent to speak to it. Yes, chief. <laughs> Well, I mean, I've got a few concerns, uh, primarily with the snow machines. Um, one being that the snow machines have a much lower profile than the cars or trucks traveling on the road. And I'm afraid that with the topography and the poor lighting, that it may be possible that a car would miss an oncoming snow machine and there could be you know, a problem there. Um, secondly, vehicles, have a harder time stopping quickly or swerving on snow and ice covered roads. I mean, if something, you know, happens, the snow machine breaks down or something, the car comes up on it quickly and has to swerve. Um, I'm concerned about an accident happening there, someone getting hurt. Um, Tim could speak to winter maintenance operations, you know, guys plowing, got a wing down, somebody comes, you know, and they don't see there's a whiteout or something and they have to hit a snow machine. Obviously, that's not going to be a good scenario for either, either person. Pedestrians out here in the wintertime with the skating rink running back and forth across the driveway and all over the place, I think that presents an added risk having the snow machines present. And my last concern is something that we can't ignore is the human element. You, you have impaired drivers of vehicles and snow machines and ATVs. Not, not every one, obviously. I never would say that, but you have to factor in that you're going to have impaired drivers out there. You combine the, the impairment with slippery roads. Um, my opinion is that it is a is a really big risk to public safety. Okay. The um, 
what's the drive to uh, get the trail over here? Is it just to have a destination, or is it to... Uh... Well, it, it's a combination of things that, from the snowmobile angle that there is access now, do you come up the Barry Montfay Road, which we cross the Barry Montfay yeah. Road, we cross three axes, I mean, we're, the, the slides are around regular traffic, fairly regular, and for the most part, they're licensed drivers, so they, they kind of know how the road works, and, they, and I don't think I've seen one manufacturer in 20 years that doesn't have a light that's on all the time for visibility, so you can see each other coming. But you're crossing at right angles. Yeah. As, uh, as opposed to driving in the travel portion of the roadway. We go up the travel portion of the road in Where? several places. Sheffield. Okay, but not Oregon. here. Though. Not here. That's you saying. asked me where. I'm telling you okay. where else. I'm not being adversarial. My you question were. is, yes. no, I'm not. You asked me where, and I said where. Okay. That's um, traditionally, yes. they cross at right angles. Yeah. For the road crossings. Yeah. There, there are plenty of places throughout the state. We've got over 4,700 miles. Oh, I'm not disputing that. Absolutely. That we, that we do. Absolutely. And actually coming through the industrial park out here. Yeah, Quite frankly, for me as a writer, I'd rather do this than come through the industrial park. That we have starts with the concept that we're there. The sleds come in from that side. We have first-class services here. You've got hotels and two restaurants and gas and parking. And as many times in the trail business, it's a short way as the core flies to get over to Northfield that way. But to follow the trail, it's around Robbins Barn and back and around. It's pushing. I don't know. It's got to be 15 miles or better just to get get around to reconnect and you get to over there and give you a connection back across to connect you to Northfield and south and over towards the valley over in the Wakefield. And as far as from the ATV traffic goes, that there's a couple of drivers there. The first up, there are already ATV trails that can be used there, except that the parking area is for just parking a few compact cars is a fine idea. But if people actually start using that trail, you know, if me, and Steve and Nick here showed up with our trucks and trailers to unload to actually use the trails, suddenly that parking lot's pretty full. Whereas if you could park here and buy your gas and slip down around there and get up onto the trail system, you're not getting anybody else's way up on the, the hill. And the hope is to connect that down into, because the ATV trails now come up to where exit five come down, down to the gas station, which connects you into the Northfield Lost Nation system, which takes you clear to Braintree, which can in, in turn connect you as far as South is in the Bethel and down through there, trying to connect these systems together. In any place that where you have within eyesight of each other, first class services and interstate access and everything, and then look over there, it's a pretty awesome wooded territory. I was reminded that I hadn't been up in there in years of how it's, it, it's, it's a pretty amazing and scenic route up through there along the ridge and down through there, the sort of thing that give the opportunity for a lot more people to enjoy and to use and we've got a lot of folks up on the hill up here that have machines that they, they can't access the trail system because they can't get down under the bridge to get onto it. There, there's a lot of angles to that. Mostly it seems like other than this little well, the part where we're having here trying to get this piece of road, it's really an ideal place to be. Um, Nick Sargent, Lost Nation ATV Club, Trails Coordinator. Um, this is the first year I was actually up on that ridge, and it is gorgeous. It's nice for us to be able to take our trail system and get out to the services, like the hotel, and bring some money into here, get some money into the um, gas station. It's just a beautiful ride up across the top of the mountain, and it'd be nice to be able to enjoy that a little bit more in the summertime. I mean, we typically during the summertime, on any given day, it's usually less than 10 ATVs during weekends, and weekdays is limited, very limited. Yeah. So we, we're not talking about, a lot of people are just talking about the few people who want to get out and enjoy things. A lot of people tend to go out to bigger places to go ride more, and we're just offering services and get people out to enjoy on Sunday crew. Yes, sir. Steve Malandi, Barrytown Thunder Chickens. I've been a director for almost 20 years, groomer and trail builder. Um, back when I worked at Rossi Buick, um, I think it was 1991, the Berlin Wolverines were up here and the trail went through. And I believe last meeting you said something about why the trail was closed on this side. And 
I don't think it was quite right. The reason the trail was closed, we had a landowner issue on our side that prevented us to keep this trail open and inevitably was the end of them because nobody was going to come up to ride up to ride back if they couldn't get through. Yeah. Um, that trail was there for many years going under that underpass. Not any situations that I ever knew of. I used to ride the trail, um, single file. Everybody knows the deal. They ride snow machines. Um, it's not like summertime. 10, 15 Harley Davidsons going through there with cut off exhaust pipes and blatting up over that hill. Um, people are in their houses for most of the time. Windows are closed. Snow machines are decibel, lower decibel rated. Um, so I don't think there is as much of an impact as what's led to believe. Yeah. Uh, I believe if, if this is done right and everybody's on board with it, um, it would be a very good access for the VAS system to get onto the other side of the hill. Because if from here down, it's all the way to Bolton before you can cross 89 again. So you're, either, you're, you know, you're committed once you're on that side of the mountain. Uh, yeah. for quite a long trail. Um, I think it would benefit in a lot of ways. I don't think you'd see a lot of traffic. Um, a lot of people are out for a good ride. If it's a short ride, you know, it would be a shorter trip back over to this side of the mountain. Um, but the aspect of trails being on the roads, um, we do it up in Washington, um, Corinth. Uh, there's many places where there's an actual, um, I can't come up with the word, there's a, a legislative, you know, number for being being able to ride the roads. An ordinance. Uh, what's that? An ordinance. ordinance. I'm sorry, yes. And we have it right up on Cheney Road. We go right down Cheney Road up on, up off the access road. Yeah. Um, so there are several places. It takes some adjustment with everybody, you know, both parties. Um, but I think one of the concerns has been that um, it's it's not so much the uh, the uh, snowmobiles and, and ATVs uh, on the road is it is the number of cars and the traffic counts we have here in town yep. and I think it does lead to a little bit of um, uh, or it will lead to conflict between cars and uh, snowmobiles and ATVs what can you do to shorten the span that you are on the road? Shorten distance. Yeah. Um, up on the. I mean, I think you've got. Up on the Black Road and up in up in that area um, to go down the back side of the pond. Um, sometimes <coughs> landowners are, are reluctant to let you use their land the first year or so. Yeah. They see you going down the side of the road. See so you going down the side of the road. A year or two, they're like use the back of my property, get away, you know, get away from the road. Um, they see common sense in it. Um, down here, we're very limited to what we can do. Um, yeah. You know, that underpass is what it is. Um, the closest we can get to it on each end, the, the, less, um, the less we use. But you can only come up so far, and there's an issue of uh, coming up on a right angle onto the road. Um, the trail does not have to be a, a right angle. We can we can stake it, post it, so they come up, so they're not coming right up yeah. and then trying to turn their snow machine. Um, we can make things safer. We can do a lot of things. We run you know a lot of places that we have to co coexist with the road. Yeah. Um, who, uh, who who grooms the trail over here to make wood now? I do. Yeah. What are you using for a groomer? Uh, we use a Tucker Cat with a rubber track. Yeah. Um, no steel track, no damage to the road. Um, we run it in the parade in Berry City in the middle of the summer, right up the pavement. Yeah. There's no harm whatsoever. Um, the Tucker Cat, they actually use them for agricultural use in the summertime. Um, fields and stuff like that. And How wide is the groomer? The groomer's eight foot six. So what are you grooming in the road? We wouldn't be grooming in the road. Mm -hmm. um, what we would actually do is, is if we had help with the town and they you know, push the road, push the snow down in the side, 
we're physically just going to come out and go down and make sure the other part of the trail, we pick everything right up and we, we have wheels and we just travel down that portion. We're all lit up. Um, reflectors, just like any town piece of equipment, mm -hmm. um, we're subject to being seen like that. So um, we would just go through and go up and we're going to meet with Northfield somewhere up in that field where it's um, the easiest for both to turn around and come back. And for the most part, when it's perfectly fine through here, we'll turn at the Maplewood and head right back. You know, there's no need for us to go through there, you know, three, four times a week. You know, after a snowstorm to uh, bust down the snowbanks to make it safer, um, to groom the trail to the where we turn around, um, that would be pretty much the extent of the grooming. So to be clear, because in the beginning of this, you were going to be in the ditch along the side of the road, Brookfield Road. So are we in the road now, or are we in the ditch? It's some of both. It, 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 where the there is space beside the road, the groomer will come up <coughs> between the plowing for the snow plow and the groomer as he's transporting from one side to the other, will run in the same track so it squashes down the snow banks and creates kind of a plateau off to the side. There are places where the, the bank gets too close to it, so you are on the side of the road. But the sleds follow down the traffic the same. They're, they're motorized vehicles just like everybody else, and they go pick the best lane they can find based on what's there. Whenever there's snow available and you can get further off to the side, you do. But there are times when you, you're not able to get all the way off of there because the terrain's not the same all the way up the side of the road there. Wherever possible, it swings wide and it packs down and the sleds themselves will get up on the snow banks and pack them down. But there are places where they will be in the actual travel part of the road where it comes out too close so that you can do that. We have explored many possibilities to get around that. Currently, this is the best case scenario we have. To loop up around to get over the water here, as best as I can tell, unless there's something that somebody can tell me that I haven't been able to find, that the city of Montpelier has got it right away on each side of the water and they won't allow us to cross any of their property. There's an old road and a power line and such that was going to lay us to get around all of the Black Road, except that's the city of Montpelier once again has jurisdiction over that, and after a lengthy process with them, they decided that they're not willing to do that. that I didn't quite follow the logic and, and how they went with that, but it's their property, so it doesn't really matter why they, you know, what, what they say. It's their property. If they don't want us to cross it, they don't want us to cross it, the same as it is here that, I mean, the machines literally, we share lots of roads and lots of places. I understand everyone's concerned, because since they're not used to seeing it and not used to having things there, but these are people who, they're the smallest machine on the road, and they are the last guy that wants to be in an incident, so they're kind of paying attention. When you're riding, it's just like driving your car. When you're on the interstate and there's 10 miles of straight line in front of you, you might relax a little bit, but when you get around with there's stuff moving, you're on your toes and paying attention and you're not even allowed on the trail without having to pass a safety course and have to, you know, you, there's, there's a process that you have to go through to go there. Yeah, so, <clears throat> so I've had three email comments, if I could read those. Sure. Um, first, um, and I'm just doing this in order of, of what, how we got them. Uh, first is from Mary Vapel on Highland Avenue, I think she, she lives over there. Um, she, she writes, uh, I just saw on Front Porch Forum about the possibility of utilizing some of the town roads for snowmobiling to connect Northfield and Maplewood trails. I'm absolutely in favor of this and was wondering if there was something available that outlined exactly where the proposed new trail would be. I see the minutes are not yet posted from last night and I was wondering if there are any decisions made or future meetings regarding this. I responded to her and kind of explained to her the, the, the rough path of the trail that uh, we talked about at the last meeting. Next one is from Shay Miller who is on Black Road who would be, whose right, um, his driveway would essentially be crossed by this. Um, uh, I do not support allowing snowmobile slash ATV use of town roads. I have concerns about the negative impacts on established uses of the roads and the quality of life along the roads. Snowmobiles are required to meet the noise level specifications of not more than 73 decibels on the A scale at 50 feet in a normal operating environment, but allowing road access would put some houses and many road users much closer than 50 feet to the loud vehicles. I also have concerns about the safety of allowing additional motorized traffic and added cost to road maintenance and policing for Berlin. Please keep these issues in mind when considering road access for snowmobiles and ATVs. Uh, next one is from Vicki Law on Brookfield Road. Um, the thought of having yet more traffic along any portion of Brookfield Road, especially during the winter months when the road tends to become more narrow with heavy snowfall, is beyond troubling. 
First of all, to cross the road from the beginning of Payne Turnpike South to reach the field across from it would be hazardous to traffic coming from Payne Turnpike South around a somewhat blind corner, even in clear weather. Second, the Brookfield Road area in question is dangerous as is, let alone attempting to fit in yet another, quote, lane. There isn't even a shoulder on that road, only a fairly deep ditch and lined with trees that are too close to the road to even consider there being ample space for anything else. To think that a groomer could even create an additional space for snow machines slash ATVs is absurd. Please reconsider this proposal as it's simply an accident waiting to happen and would make those living on that road even more nervous about safe, safely getting to and from our destinations. I also have one from Shay Miller. It was, um, it was the same one. Uh, he, he emailed all of us. Okay. So, so I, I just, just want to stress, I'm sorry, it's not going to be, we're not looking for an eight foot travel portion. It, it's a single lane. Yeah. But is it coming and going? It um, would be. So that's two lanes. Or at a point in time. You know, I think the Brookfield Road, I walked that road 24 days out of every month. I have changed my glasses, my socks, my hat, my shirt to look at that ditch and try to find a safe way to put anything on there. I stand to the side of the road when the pickup trucks whiz by. I just can't imagine another vehicle. An ATV went by us the other day. It may have been registered, but there's just no way it would fit on the side of the road. And I think Brad's sort of talking this up. Can you shorten the distance anyway? Mm -hmm. um, we would love to do that. If yeah. The problem becomes you have to have landowner permission wherever you go. We had a tentative route to skip all of that. Right. And somewhere between when I was here and in, in between, I'm not really sure. They were supposed to be, I got to talk to my dad or some sort of anyway. Well, Josh got an email that they had presented that possibility. And we would continue to look for that. But under, you know, with today's reality, that's what we have to face, that we don't have enough of the people in a, in a line in order to connect up through the woods there. There's plenty of opportunity to build a trail, except you have to have permission from the people who own the property. And it only takes one in between to, to block that off and and yes the whole part of talking about a ditch into the side of the road and stuff was just to show that there are places where you can get particularly in the wintertime to, to get so you're not on there but you're having a machine that's between you know 48 and 60 inches wide which is smaller than anything else on there just using a lane down the road the same it is if you have two cars coming down the road or anything it's not like I mean, I understand from folks that don't do this all the time, and we haven't done an awful lot of you, you're just coming out just like you would with a small car, and you pull down the road, and when you get room, you get to the side like you were driving a tractor because it's moving slower than the rest of the traffic. And you go along, and you look twice and watch where you go, and it's a short period. I used to ride that same that road myself. I, proud, I was proud, couldn't have been 13 or 14 years old the first time I rode up and down that road, which was a couple of days ago. But well, Unfortunately, we were at the end of the hearing. We're running into select board time. Okay. Um, again, there'll be another another hearing in... Uh, on the 15th in, two, in the next meeting? Yeah. yeah. So that's the 15th. And uh, I thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Dana, additions or changes to the agenda? I think that Jeremy wants to add an item to the agenda reporting on the Center for Modern Internet. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Is that it, Dana? Yes. Okay. Uh, public comment? Seeing none. Um, Treasury report. Not, uh, not. Yep. Okay, <clears throat> I did include the September trial balance budget status report and delinquent tax report for the select board in the package that you received. Um, the state of Vermont has asked Sullivan and Powers to audit the VEMERS report, the Vermont, um, for the, for Vermont pension plan that we have, and so they're going to all the towns and they're auditing all the towns, um, which is fine. I'll be audited uh, next Friday is when I have it scheduled, and all they'll be doing is looking not for this past fiscal year, but the fiscal year before that and they're just verifying the information, make sure that everything is in line. And like I said, they're doing every single town that uh, that, be that has beamers. Mm. So just I'll make you aware of that. I don't know if I'll hear anything from that report because everything will go into the state of Vermont and the state of Vermont is paying for it. 
Interestingly enough, that is also the same material that our auditors are yes. quite careful about auditing. Yes, they're yeah. very mm -hmm. careful. And, and they're going to give us the results of that audit, and we can sort of. I'm not sure them. if they will or not, because they'll be giving the results to Vermont, the state of Vermont, because we're not hiring them. The state well, of Vermont is. Well, but I thought we, we should maybe we could request them as a public record. I think that's a good idea. We probably could ask the treasurer's office for yep. give us a copy. I mean, it, it's probably going to look the same as what we're paying our auditors for, but I, I think having another set of eyes on it, if we can. At least uh, I think see, it's a good idea because they may be looking at it differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Okay, I'll definitely ask for that. And otherwise, not the other things I have are in the uh, agenda. Okay, um, we look at the mm -hmm. okay. uh, approvals of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. <coughs> Do you have a cheat sheet? Yes. Oh, you go. Move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number uh, 19G09 with checks 18563 through 18600 in the amount of $301,555.82. Also, payroll warrant number 19 09 for payroll from October 14th, 2018. To October 27, 2018, in the amount of $43,069.17. Second. Any further discussion? I'd like to mention that that accounts payable, the general fund, is that large because we're paying that paving bill, just for anybody who's, who's watching. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. And the uh, signature of the traffic ordinance. You had changed the amended the traffic ordinance. It was a small amendment on Browns Mill Road to from 25, I mean from 35 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour. That was voted on August 20th, and there is a 60-day look back that we have to wait before an ordinance is effective. We did not get any comments or any concerns regarding that. And so October 19th, the ordinance became effective, and I would ask that the board sign. This is the last page of the ordinance, so I can give an updated copy to the clerk's office. Do you need a motion on this one, Dana? I don't think so. Been You've been already been voted on. The sign's already been installed. So. <laughs> All right. So Wait, if they didn't no, sign it, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> And discussion of the audit, uh, Diane? Yes, I guess that Dan and I were talking about that because uh, the, the auditors, Father Gil Segali, that we have right now, they've got me entering the third year, okay, so it's going to be the contract will be up. So Dan and I were kind of talking about. We had, um, we just thought we'd have this discussion because normally we would automatically put out an RFP for, for an bid on the audit. Every time we change auditors, I think it costs the town some money because of coming up to speed where the audit is. I think it's a good idea. Many towns might use the same firm but ask for a different team. Um, so I um, just thought I'd mention that to the board before we went ahead and necessarily started and sent out right. a new RFP. Um, There's no extension on this? We don't okay. have, and that's the, no, we do not have an extension. There was not an extension written into that um, RFP, the last RFP. And we are charged by the hour. So if they have to get additional information that we'd already supplied to other auditors, right. we're paying for that. What we found last time, I think, was there are three firms, really, that were qualified to to do this in this area, to do the, to do the audit. Um, and and they're, three, they're three good firms. I mean, if it's certainly they would do a very good job, although it just is expensive, for lack of a better way to put it, to change, change horses. Do we have to? You know. don't. We do not. No. It's our policy too, but I mean, it's the board's decision. Okay. I think if I could also pitch, um, because the fire department also incurs a cost for an audit too, and we've talked about the wisdom of including the, some of the fire department finances and possible, um, and possibly making them uh, a municipal department in some fashion over time or whatever. I don't think we're ready to do that now, um, but and as we're as the budget is also an item here, um, 
maybe that's something for us to talk about too. If we do, if we do put it out to bid, or even if we don't, would it make sense? Does the board think it makes sense for us to sort of try to get that as a as a package deal? For both. For both, yeah. have both audited is the same time at the same time. But I mean, their their books are separate. It's not Diane's yeah. thing. But what if, um, you know, what if the what if the fire department hired the town or something? However, we would manage that, and Diane could essentially manage their books and have the audit kind of capture that at the same time. So I think that Diane would be willing to partner with them to help this process mm -hmm. through. We had talked about that. I believe Joe Saab was here mm -hmm. um, and talked about that. I think it was a very viable, for whatever audit mm -hmm. firm you have. I'm thinking, right. Yeah. And, the, and the fire department board, while we haven't, we haven't passed any sort of resolution about that, they seem to be generally amenable to that. There were a lot of questions about making making a municipal department, a lot of uh, logistics and other questions that still need to be answered, but I think in terms of, of this, as sort of the kind of the low hanging fruit where we could save, a, I think a fair bit of money. Um, and having talked to you before about this, mm -hmm. Diane, you said yeah. it probably wouldn't be a heck of a lot more work no. for you. <clears throat> I don't think so. Now, obviously, I'd like to get some things audited first. Of course. I don't want to be, you know, running into <laughs> issues, but uh, beyond that, I don't feel that it would be that time consuming for me. Does the program, um, does the program you, you're using, will it support that? Um, I not. I don't think I would be using Nemric that we have right now, and I don't know if Nemric has anything for fire departments. They might, and I could certainly well, inquire. I mean, you'd think they would. They there's a lot of cities they, that they do that uh, have fire departments. Yeah, so they probably, they might. I'm sure it's just like our software mm -hmm. is just another department. Yeah, you know. and if I had to get general ledger software just for, you know, just for that, I don't think that would be expensive and I think that that would be easily done. Keeping a subsidiary company as well. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah because mm -hmm. we'd want to keep that separate. You would right. not want that with a general Since it's not a department. Yeah. Yeah. If it were to become a department, that would be a different story. Right. So that was our thought on the audit um, and wanted your opinion. And you don't have to give us your opinion tonight, but if you'd like to, we wanted to plant the seed. And because we will sometime in November, if, if you choose to put on RFP, we usually like to get it out. Well, if we don't, will yeah. they sort of rebid a new number? Or I imagine they will. Yeah. yeah. I imagine they will. And we haven't really spoken with them. I mean, to be we, to be um, candid, we have not spoken with uh, Father Gail Segali about what they could do for us price-wise. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was appropriate until we had this discussion. All right. Well, I mean, if they're going to come to us with a bid anyways, we can we could start the bidding process knowing full well that if we bring in one of the other two, you know, bigger players in there, that we're going to be incurring additional costs we could add to the RFP um, a codicil um, that we might continue with the same auditor if we were so inclined to do so. Similar to what we have with the um, ambulance contract. Yeah. But be very careful how we discuss that. I think we talked about it out of executive session one night and got spanked pretty hard. Well, we won't do that. <laughs> I don't like being spanked. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on this discussion? No, thank you. Okay. Uh, reserves? Yes, there's a couple more reserves. These are the last of the reserves that I haven't talked about yet, and these are very small. They look relieved, I guess. Yeah, they should be relieved too. It has to do with cemeteries and water supply. And I think you've gotten a little bit of a blurb on it. I've gone back, I've looked through the notes, I've found what I can find on it. And it appears to me that back, one of them was like in 2006, and the other one was in 2012. But what they were doing is they were budgeting an amount of money for, uh, for water, which was uh, engineering that they were looking for, and cemeteries, which was mowing. And if they didn't spend the whole amount in the budget, they would carry it over into reserve. Well, it just seems like you know, this has been hanging out there for at least four years, if not more. So in the water supply, which we use for engineering, you know, back in the day, there's $2,165.39, and in cemeteries, which was used for mowing, which we do set up money for mowing every year, there's $2,758.37. So those 
reserves probably should be used for what they were into, you know, what we had actually set them up for, or just not touching them at all. And they're small amounts. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, the one for the water, we're going to be doing the engineering on the other well. Can you just roll them up? There, there are. It yeah. seems to me, um, yeah. Could do that. There's, we certainly could use the money in the water division. Right. And the cemeteries, you and I were talking, maybe if there is stones well, that needed to be again, fixed um, or something, too. I think it would be nice if, if cemetery thought about maybe fixing some of the stones, perhaps, um, that there's no relatives left. Now, obviously, for $2,000, you're not going to get a lot Much. of work done, I wouldn't think. Um, but there's, but there are some. But it was set aside for mowing, and it seems to be reasonable just to use these small amounts for what they were intended for, rather than keep them in the bank forever and a day. Because right. we're not getting interest on them that <coughs> is worth anything. So could we just throw them into mowing or maintenance or whatever? Or do you we or could, or yeah. What, Road crew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, well, that we can't do. But no. Right. No, but what we, I could we can do. mow your lawn. Too. So if well, you'd like us to do that, we do need a motion yeah. to allow us to use the reserve. We can make that them. happen when we have bills coming in in the future. For the for those apartments. Yep. So so the one is the one is for mm -hmm. specifically for cemetery mowing. There's one that was cemeteries, yes, and that's just called cemeteries, and it was used for mowing prior, okay. and that's ten two thousand seven fifty eight thirty seven. And then there's one for water supply for 2,165.39. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion that we um, we authorize the treasurer to pay for cemetery-related expenses out of the cemetery reserve fund and for water supply-related expenses out of the water reserve fund. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. And budget preparation for fiscal year 2000. This is so, this is so exciting, and we just wanted to um, <laughs> remind you that it's budget time coming mm. up again. And um, <laughs> and I guess I just wanted to. I'm going to be going to department heads and asking for the annual wish list, which um, will go through several meetings and be pared down in order to make it feasible. Um, and I wanted the board's advice, was there anything in particular for a goal that the board had in mind? And, and also to advise, get the board's idea on meeting schedules. Oftentimes we meet weekly in a, in a few cases. Um, I, think, I think weekly, like we've done in the past, yeah. I think makes, okay. makes sense. On a Thursday probably would be good? Worked so far. Okay. Um, any idea as far as a goal that we should look for? I mean, sometimes it's easier for, for the department heads of myself to say, you know, Tim, you're not going to get a new building this year. I mean, that, <laughs> you know, and to be realistic. Well, I'd like to think we could level fund again, but I don't think we're going to be able to. <laughs> I, I am very hesitant that you could level fund. We're not, um, so we're not adding a new officer. This year, well, you have last year. You voted to add an officer. However, you only budgeted half a year for that officer. So this year, it will impact the salary line in police because we'd have to budget the entire year. But do we? Are we actually going to have a full complement of officers the entire year? Um, it hasn't <laughs> happened yet. Um, but I think that if we have Jeremy, <laughs> just say so. I, I, I'm not going to say yes. <laughs> Um, and so, obviously, when that happens, we do have le uh, we do have excess funds in the salary line, which goes back to the citizens as far as fund balance. However, we don't know. Right. Yeah. So, what was that off the top of my head? When we didn't we have like an equipment reserve, we were mm -hmm. funding every year. But that was but added to the budget. And that if we level fund that, we're going to still keep plowing that same amount in there. So that's there. Yeah. But that was. This won't be increasing it. R right, same mm -hmm. amount, but it mm -hmm. goes in. Yep. Do we have any huge equipment to buy this year? We perhaps will have an expense um, <laughs> following our accident with the excavator. Uh -huh. I can't tell you how much or anything, but again, that's what that fund is for. Right. And we have another another cruiser coming up. It's coming. Usually, we replace yeah. a police cruiser. 
So I believe I don't believe Highway has any trucks in mind. No, no, no. Great Eagle. No. Too bad. Yeah, they were both used. That's greater and greater were both used. I don't think we're in the position this year to do the greater if we do another. The excavator. got a year left on. Yeah, but you're going to get insurance money on the excavator. Well. You're not going to be able to buy a new excavator for the insurance money. No, but I mean you're going to. You're I understand. Gonna, yeah, yeah we, I understand. We, we, we can. You're going to. You'll probably get more than you, you would if you had to trade it in. That's for sure. Right. So maybe we should think about buying part of the grader next year. Or and, and that was the reason why. Accumulating the reserve. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. I mean. We, they, you don't need to buy an excavator. I mean, they can fix it, so the insurance should cover the repairs on the, the excavator. Well, we are, we are speaking prematurely. We don't know. Yeah, the okay. insurance could very well say we'll pay for the repairs, and that would be great. Because, right. because with the, the price that I got today, it's not going to be um, more than what the excavator is worth, so they're not going to total it out. Okay. So, okay, well, that I didn't know, and that's an insurance hasn't given us a decision. So, uh, but I'm trying to make the board just aware that we have some expenses that we know we'll have. And, and of course, the trailer. But, right. The insurance. Mm -hmm. and the fire department. I'm just thinking of the big east. But I think the fire department can probably come in level. I mean, I, I, I haven't looked de detailed into the budget, um, but we're working on it right now, too. Mm -hmm. And if we can. Uh, push down the cost of, of bookkeeping and the audit. I mean, we could we could come come back with a budget that's three percent lower. Wow, that's good. Without, I, I would say, without too much effort. Um, so maybe not level fund, but again, with so with salary increases and we usually do. Um, I think traditionally around in the two percent range mm -hmm. for salary increases. Um, and other big expenses that are. Different so cul culverts. I think those are all accounted for. Um, I think we have Richardson Road culvert coming up, but we do have funds that we have budgeted for that, okay. and so I, I think it won't impact us too negatively. Um, so we could be in pretty good shape as far as if you're trying to keep it level right. as I'm level thinking, as possible. But I don't. I, I hate to promise it's going to be level when we really haven't gotten to the bottom. So I'm, I'm just thinking the things that we're going to expect are going to go up is that the salaries mm -hmm. and then plowing some money into a reserve for equipment. Mm -hmm. Insurances. Yeah, I suppose those will creep up too also. Mm -hmm. Creep. Some of them will go up 14%. <laughs> yeah. okay. the, the benefits I are. I try to be slightly optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so we'll, we'll level fund the insurance. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so, good. Yeah. So I think we'll be starting um, the budget. Maybe we'll start the budget series next in two weeks, yeah. and okay. and get going. We'll start out. working with that. And then well, so, so Diane we'll can the have the letters up to the department heads. I will I will do that, and then I'll schedule them to come in to talk to you. Diane and I will do the administrative. Um, we can do that in exactly, two weeks. Yes, we um, and then we'll ask the police chief and Tim to come in at mm -hmm. a subsequent meeting. And I will contact the fire department. They usually come in in December sometime. Mm -hmm. um, so I will contact Joe Staub mm -hmm. um, to arrange something with him. That's, that's, what it. I, that's all we need to say to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's all we want to hear. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you didn't want to hear that. Yeah. But. <laughs> uh, Small Business Saturday. Traditionally, every year you have approved the Small Business Saturday, and they send us a script for you to approve. It changes ever so slightly every year. Um, so I guess I'm asking you to consider supporting Small Business Saturday, which this year is November 24th. It's the Saturday of the Thanksgiving weekend. And that, of course, is to shop locally and support small businesses. Move to sign the Small Business Saturday resolution as presented. Second. So any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> it's just a little late on the eye. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're okay if you want to. If you'd like to leave, Thanks. you don't have to. But.
Thank you, Diane. Town administrative report, Dina. I have a few things that I'd just like to um, tell you. As you know, I've been talking about the town plan and getting the town plan approved, and we did have some bumps along the way. We have the letter that just came that the plan has been approved. Um, it has a few uh, conditions for approval um, that were noted in your letter that you sent out regarding um, rewriting a few of the support of the, I think it was the child care portion, and there was also an employment portion, not a huge huge deal and we agreed to do that. So that is, and I, again, a lot of people work very hard on this, not myself, but a lot of people work very hard on this and I applaud them, um, the planning commission. Um, I did receive a notice that there is a class on the Emerald Ash Borer on November 28th. It's gonna be presented by the University of Vermont Extension at their office down on the Barry Montpelier Road you're interested. We received a thank you letter from the Good Samaritan Haven for our contribution to them. Um, and since the town plan is now approved, uh, we are starting to ramp up our follow through on the designated town center uh, application. Um, and Tom and I met with Mike Rushman this week. And as you remember, uh, Mike came into you and the board supported the idea of the town center designation. The mall is providing Mike Rushman's services. Um, and we are going to first start by actually formally deciding what will be included in that town center. In other words, they need things like civic organizations. The school would be a good one, for example. Um, and whatever else, and I think the hospital was another one they had in mind as a, as a community type thing. So we're working on that. Um, we did apply for a grant for Better Roads to follow up. Tim and I went out with regional planning, Dan Currier from regional planning, who reviewed with us a lot of our ditches and how to um, improve our ditching drainage. And to do that, Obviously, we have to do some work, so we have applied for a Better Roads grant for that. Um, the Mirror Lake Road culvert um, is coming along, and it was noted today to me of how big it is. And it kind of looks like a Quonset hut in the middle of the road. Um, and I do have a calling to John Grenier because I'm a little concerned about it. Um, I have not heard from him back yet, but I will follow up with that, and, but they are working on it. Um, the police department doors, and I know you're tired of hearing about these doors and so am I, uh, but we absolutely have to do something. We got the one quote, so I did go back and I um, spoke with EF Wall and I spoke with La Genesse, um and asked if there's what they could think of, even in a different way, if we fix it a different way, what might we be able to do. Um, I have a feeling we're going to end up in the $10,000 range with those doors. Um, but at some point we have to do something. Um, the hazard mitigation plan, the grant was approved um, the that the state got through the feds. Um, so we're really, now we can set out an RFP for the hazard, um, for the plan to be uh, done. However, the, we don't have the signed grant paperwork and I'm hesitant to do that until I do because we can't use in-kind services if I start working on it before we have that paper. Yeah. So um, <coughs> I would like to have the grant done quickly, and but we don't have it done yet. So that's, that's uh, a little update of what we have going on. Tom mentioned to me today that he, um, the water division used this month 50% more water than they used the month before. And we have added, uh, which is a good thing. Um, it gives us more revenue for, for our customers because the um, motor in Hilltop is now connected to the water system. The mall is going to be connected to the, uh, the water system within the next few weeks. 
so we have some very large um, users coming on. We also, at the next meeting, you'll be meeting with um, a gentleman who will be coming in to, to give you an update on an idea for a parcel at the mall, and they have not made an, an application to um, DRB yet but they asked if they could come in and talk with you about that, and I made an appointment for them for next time on the 15th. So you got one restaurant that hooked up and the water use went up by 50%? Well, I don't think it's the one restaurant. Okay. No, well, it's the, the motor end. Right. The motor end. Oh, and the um, Genesis, the, the nursing home. Um, so they're on now? You know, yes. So it's, um, and Tom just mentioned, I didn't really analyze right. where, where the water, but he, obviously we keep track of pumping records. Oh, sure. And so yeah, we're, yeah. we're that pumping. That motel must use quite a bit of water. Yeah. What's that? That motel must use quite a bit of I, water. Oh, I would think so, yeah. Well, I think in the very beginning, well, not the very beginning, but would, just the hospital would have used over 60%. Right. They said. What's the capacity? Um, well, I don't know for gallons. I think it's like we can pump 216,000 gallons per day, right. um, and that equated to like 432 ERUs, and we are more than that, not a great deal more, but and that's why the next, the other well is being mm. developed now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, again, and we keep telling you this, there are many ERUs that are not actual mm -hmm. in use. But if they've been sold. And, and the ERUs, um, which is a good thing. The ERUs are estimated on the high side just for mm -hmm. protection. But I think for all the struggle that everybody had before us, whatever, getting that water system in, that it's pretty comforting to see how quickly and how Berlin embraced it once it was in place. And I think these developments that are coming down, since we have water sewer, it makes it a lot more attractive to mm -hmm. To that type of. And speaking yeah. of the sewer, what what what's the timeline for that again? If you can refresh my memory. The um, the, the the project on the sewer. Mm -hmm. I'm not exact sure the exact timeline. They are working on it now, and I think they had hoped to have the project completed in the next year. So so they're working on the engineering of that. Right, right now, now they're doing the engineering okay. and and that type of thing. Okay. And also um, we've met with a couple of financing sources, and it probably will be. Um, I always get this mixed up. I always say FDIC, but it's not. It's the same. Mm -hmm. um, NCUA, the, the credit union? Mm -hmm. No, it begins with, um, it's the federal rural agricultural oh, yeah. um, program. Okay. And that completes that's it. my end. Yeah. Uh, round table P. A second. Central Rural Internet item. Oh, that's right. right. If I can just do that yep. quick. So um, Central Rural Internet uh, approved a draft annual report and a draft budget to solicit feedback. It was supposed to have gotten to all of you. Did you? It was sent to all the all the town city clerks to be disseminated. So I don't know. Did everybody else get that? Was it a? It was a report to be included in the town report. Um, Possibly, it's still a draft report. It's for. Was there any action item with it? Because I do believe that the clerk received that. So um, th I, there was a specific ask in the email that I sent out to the clerks to distribute to the select boards or the and the city councils. All right. Well, I'll follow up with that and make sure you get a copy. Okay. So um, I, I can go over it briefly. Um, we're not installing fiber optic anything yet. Um, so the first um, couple steps that we've um, Couple milestones we've hit, all that unglamorous work of bylaws, policies. We have a draft budget. Um, we're rebranding it from Central Vermont Internet to CV Fiber, as in Central Vermont Fiber. Um, we've registered CVFiber.net. Um, so we have a mission statement that's been, um, I'm sorry, a mission statement here and a, a vision. Um, the, our next steps are starting to. Um, survey residents looking at a pilot project and the budget that um, that we put together is roughly three hundred thousand dollars it's not anything that's coming from towns that's going to be either um, uh, raised in terms of loans or donations or grants to do the initial pilot project of about uh, six miles of fiber to hook up hopefully uh, between 30 
36 and 50 subscribers, where, wherever that might be. Not really sure where that is. So um, any sort of feedback that the individual you know, legislative bodies of the towns have on that budget or on the, um, on the annual report is something that can be presented at our next meeting. We have, an, we have a public hearing on Tuesday, November 13th at 6 p.m. at Berlin Elementary, where we have the um, where we have our monthly meeting. And so, any of the 16 member towns that have comments, ideas, direction, uh, can bring that to that meeting, or you can send it to me, and I can communicate that at the meeting as well. Some big steps. Yeah, and whether and whether we will actually, you know, land that much revenue and actually build the thing up by the end of next year. Right. It's not entirely clear, but it's so somewhat aspirational, but I think there is a couple of really promising options that we could start hooking people up with gigabit fiber much sooner than, than I'd initially imagined. Good. I mean, it's amazing. I'm looking around different parts of the country at stuff, and there's a lot of place that does not have internet, and it affects the price of housing dramatically. I, I've had people Just, call me because my number's <clears throat> listed on the Central Vermont Internet Facebook page, and they'll and they'll call me and they'll say, "I'm looking to buy a house in wherever. You know, do you serve there?" I was like, "Well, <laughs> hold on a second. But I can usually tell them pretty pretty much. I can bring up maps, and I can tell them is there cable, is there DSL, is there anything? And I tell them, "It's like, well, there's DSL there, and you'll, so you'll probably get what six megabits per second." They're like, "Oh." I think we're going to have to look somewhere else then. It's like it's, it's dumbfounding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have access to high speed in. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have high speed, but it's not yeah. maximum. Yeah. And, so I, and I and I and I don't have access well, to cable even though the cable all company all the time, main no. offices is mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> do you do you have access to cable up on Junction Road? Yep. Yeah, we're on. Uh, uh, well, Rita types to the hospital, so she. That's has, right. That's right. She has that height. So a dedicated link there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Round, are we all done, Jeremy? Yeah, all done. Uh, so round table. Sure. I'm all set. Jeremy? Okay. Um, well, one more thing. Uh, the, I went to the memorial service at the fire department. They dedicated their um, the, the plaques on the front of the building. Um, it was a, a, an incredible turnout. They had a, a, a Norwich, the uh, Pipes and Drums band, whatever. It was... It was great. I mean, so there was a kind of a lot of a lot of people who hadn't been there in years and years who, who came back to say hi and sort of show their thanks and eat food. Good time. <laughs> Any later? Yeah. Any executive session? No. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh -huh.